Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Creating the Vision, where we are going to talk all things getting organized for the holidays. It's that time of year where everything is so chaotic, (laughs) and I don't have much cheer because I'm overwhelmed and stressed. Okay, if that's you, then this episode is for you. Okay, I am going to dive right in and share with you some very compelling statistics on why you should get organized for the holidays. And then I'm going to share with you my list on how I make that happen in our home. Cleaning professionals say that getting rid of excess clutter would eliminate 40% of the housework in an average home. One in 11 Americans rent a storage space, spending over a thousand dollars a year in rent on that space. I'm not sure what people are putting in them, but maybe it's time to go through them and see what we could possibly donate or throw out or give away or sell or you name it or reuse or recycle. Yeah. On and on and on. But that's a lot of money to spend on some stuff that you aren't using in your everyday life. 80% of the clutter in most homes is a result of disorganization, not a lack of space. And for every hour of planning, three to four hours are saved. So think about that. For one hour spent planning and getting organized, you're saving three to four hours in the follow-up. So I'm so excited to share with you the list that I put together for how we can all get organized for the holidays. Am I perfect at this? Absolutely not. I've got three kids. I'm a work in progress. We're a work in progress, but we're not clutter people. We don't like a lot of clutter. I never have. I think because I grew up around it. And so it it, it sometimes prevented me from being able to think. And I just know that I think better when I have a clear space and an organized space. That doesn't mean that we don't have stacks or piles of things here and there. We're, We're human after all. And we are a home that operates with three human beings and we get busy and we get overwhelmed and we get stressed. But when that happens and we start to see the clutter build up, We take that hour so that we save ourselves three to four. So the first thing that we do is we create a checklist. And especially around the holidays, this is absolutely crucial. Creating that checklist, make a comprehensive checklist of all the tasks that you need to accomplish before and during the holidays. The holidays are meant to be joyous time spent with family. So by doing some of these things, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and peace to be able to enjoy your holiday experience with your family. So on this on this checklist include everything from gift shopping and wrapping to meal planning, decorating, and sending out holiday cards. Guess what? You don't need a $250 photo shoot to make a Christmas card. Pull all those really fun pictures that you took throughout the year, slap them on a Canva design, and hit order. Just make sure that you change the family's name on the example card to your family's name because that's hilarious when people make that mistake. It's always a great memory though, right? Okay, break down those larger tasks into smaller, more actionable steps that can make the process more manageable. And what does that sound like? Goal setting, right? Sounds like the goal setting process and the vision imagery process, breaking down larger goals into smaller, more manageable tasks that can be accomplished. So create that checklist as number one. Number two, set a budget. Set a budget so you avoid and can reduce your financial stress. I will share with you a tip that we started several years ago with our children that has worked really well on helping us navigate and mitigate some of the financial strain of the holidays. And that is a template that we send our kids, well, or older too, they're 16 and 14, so they can fill it on their own. The younger one, we have to walk them through it. But it's designed around, and listen, I'm going to stop and say this. If you have children that are under the age of, say, five, guys, why do we have to blow it out of the water for them? They end up only playing with one to two toys anyway, and it's typically the one from five below. So let's get real here. Your kids do not need $750 worth of toys. And if you feel that they do, well then seek therapy. There's so many other things that we could spend that money on than giving our kids all of these toys and things, especially when they're so little and they just don't have the capacity to to take all of that in. Listen, we learned the hard way by experience and by doing and spending all of that money. So I'm trying to save you the heartache and to your wallet and to your feelings on this day when they don't care or play with any of the toys that you've given them because they're too overwhelmed. Remember, this is very similar to goal setting. And if you've listened to me for any amount of time, if you've followed me for any amount of time, you know 
To-do lists are sometimes the crux or bane of our existence because we put way more than three things on them when we shouldn't. We should put three things, no more than three things on our to-do list because our brain cannot metabolize more than three things at one time. We start to get overwhelmed. So why are we giving our kids 15, 20 gifts per kid? Why? Why do we do it? Okay. Anyway, I'm off my soapbox there. Here is the template we send our kids. What do you want? What do you need? What do you want to wear? What do you want to read? And what do you want to experience? And yet again on the experience, I'm going to warn you, you don't have to break the bank. This doesn't have to be a $10,000 ski trip to the Austrian Alps, although that would be amazing. That would be absolutely wonderful. doesn't have to be that. You can stay local, you can stay within your state, and you can still provide your kids some really bomb experiences. So you got to get creative. Creativity is an aspect of setting a budget. How can we do more with less? So set a budget so you reduce that financial strain. Determine how much you can afford to spend on gifts, on decorations, on charitable donations, on other holiday-related expenses, and stick to it. Number three, use a calendar, especially this time of year with all of the school plays, the after-school activities, the award ceremonies, the Christmas concerts, the holiday cheer events, you name it. Use a calendar, peeps. It's going to save you a lot of time and frustration when it comes to getting organized during the holidays. You can track important deadlines and dates, you know, mark down the events, the parties, the gatherings, as well as deadlines for online shopping, shipping gifts, and other time sensitive tasks. So if something needs to get to New York before a certain time, make sure you're checking with the postal service with FedEx or UPS to make sure that you've got those, those times of when you need to ship that out in order to get there on the desired date. This just helps you manage your time more effectively and avoids kind of those last minute rushes. So use a calendar. I am a paper planner, paper calendar gal, but I also use my digital ones as well. But I always say if it's not written in my paper calendar, then it's not happening. My digital calendar is actually my backup. So for me, write it down. Declutter and organize. This entire episode is about decluttering and organization, right? And I just told you that for every one hour of planning, you save three to four. And that 80% of our issue is that we lack disorganization, not space. We've got the space. Homes are getting bigger and bigger these days. Same with apartments. It's the fact that we just lack the, the organization. So before the holiday season kicks in, which we're post Thanksgiving. So we're, we're in between those holidays, but before we get really into the swing of things with the holiday parties and the holiday events and festivities, take some time to declutter and organize your living space. The, we typically do this when we are getting out our Christmas tree, when we're getting out all of the decorations, we're putting everything up, we're putting up kind of Halloween, that hodgepodge of like Halloween mix slash Thanksgiving-esque decorations that sometimes and somehow seem to like mold and mesh together. So when we do that, it's typically when I take a little bit of time to say, okay, because we have to have space to put these decorations on, I need to get rid of some of these stacks of paper that have accumulated over time. Another rule of thumb that we have employed when getting organized is using the acronym OHIO, which is only handle it once. And you either file it, throw it away, or create an action on it in that moment. So you receive a bill, you either file it away, you throw it away, or you pay it right then and there. Whether it's online, you write the check, you mail it off, you put it in the mailbox, and you go about your day. Another thing that we have done, and this is typically for things that say, ah, we kind of sort of use like intermittently, but we don't really, and we might have gone quite a while in between the last time we actually used it. Put it in a box, label it the date, and then put the six-month date from them. And in six months, if you've not touched that box, those things get folded up, put some tape on it, and it goes to Goodwill or it goes to an organization that will take donations where they then can resell it for funds for their organization, et cetera. So those are two decluttering and organizational additional tips that, that I'll provide. But yes, basically just clearing out unnecessary stuff. We know what it is in our house, but we have to find what works best for us. So those are two, two things that I would recommend when it comes to decluttering an organization. You can buy bins, you can buy all of those things, but honestly, to me, it's like the storage space. All you're doing is 
it's like six of one, half dozen of another. You're you're literally just lifting up one to cover another. So what is the point, you know, unless you've had a loved one that's recently passed away or you have inherited a lot of things that you don't know what to do with, I'm not really sure why you would need, you know, a storage unit for just everyday kind of living. Unless you live in a big city, I guess, and you're trying to, I don't know, you have to change things out. But even then, I don't know, I'm just someone who wouldn't want to put up with that. So to each their own, find what works for you. <laughs> Delegate those tasks. This is actually a great way to stay organized during the holidays, not trying to do it all. We have to be able to delegate those tasks. So if you are planning a big dinner for the holidays, ask other people to bring dishes so that you're not left having to, to shoulder all of that. Like when it comes to Thanksgiving, I mean, I'm no help in the kitchen, I'll be the first to admit, but I mean, I can at least like help out. I can peel potatoes. I can mash them. I can do different things. This sounds really pathetic, guys. I know. I... I try to help out, but I'm great on the decorating, decorating. I'm the decorating committee, okay, in our house. So I'm the one who makes everything nice and pretty. If you see our festive garland in the background, I love decorating. I love that type of stuff. I'm the organizational guru and neat freak in our home. My husband does all the cooking. So we have specific tasks. Delegate those. If you are the mom sitting here trying to martyr yourself and do it all, girlfriend, that ain't a good look on anyone. Never will be, never has been. So don't try to do it all. Make sure that you get your kids involved, get your partner involved, get whoever you need involved, extended family, have them come help out. If you're hosting for the holidays, do, do not try to take this task on all by yourself. You will thank yourself and be so much more relaxed and less stressed by asking for help and reaching out and saying, this is what I need you to be in charge of. Make the ask put them in charge of it, give them that responsibility, and sit back. Next thing, create a system for everything. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I love creating systems for systems upon systems. I have filing cabinets for my filing cabinets. Actually, I don't, but I do have folders for my folders. <laughs> so I have a folder for each kid, and then each kid has, you know, birth certificate, social security number, et cetera, all of the, that type of paperwork. And then behind it is typically anything school related. Then behind that is typically anything physician related. So that when I need it, when I need to pull something, if I need a physical form or I need you know, to, to, to pull their birth certificate, it's readily available. Does this take time? Absolutely. Sometimes it's exhausting. And then I have to go through it every you know, one to two years to clean out all of the clutter. But is it worth it? Yes. In those moments that I have needed something immediately for one of my children, that has helped. The same goes for your taxes, you know, all those tax forms that you fill out. If you own a business, if you're a business owner like myself, all of those receipts that you keep. Yes, we can have digital and all of that, but you're going to have to keep some of those physical receipts as well. Throw them in a folder. Put them inside of a larger folder. Like, you know, get those little like file, file folders and then put them in like a hanging file cabinet inside of that and label it. 2023 20, tax receipts so that you've got them when you need them and they can help you stay organized. And it's also minimizing the clutter as well. So yes, I mentioned filing systems for documents, a calendar system for scheduling. So we have a calendar for our family where we keep everything on there. So it, we know, you know, when hubby's going to be out of town, we know when older two are going to piano and voice. We know when the younger one has tennis. We know when speech therapy, occupational therapy, a doctor's appointments, weekend, evening events, date nights, concerts, et cetera, you name it, all goes on this master calendar. It's the way in which we have to stay organized to operate efficiently and effectively as a family. So that also mitigates things during the holidays, especially because things are already overwhelming and chaotic because of the additional events and items that we have to add to that calendar. So create that system for your family. You will thank yourself and things will run so much more smoothly. And then consistency in your systems. So you can go out and get that huge filing cabinet. You can get all of the organizational tools that you need, but if you don't stick to it, if you don't have the consistency around it, well, then it's going to be incredibly and increasingly frustrating for you if you're not making time for it. So Set a reminder on your calendar every two weeks to go through the papers on the, on what, you know, for us, we have like a little bar area. So we keep a lot of our mail and papers there. 
we go through them weekly. But but if you're just getting started, set one for every every two weeks. Every two weeks, go through those papers. Like I said, Ohio, only handle it once. Figure out what you're going to do with it. Throw it away, file it away, keep it and, and create an action item for it. Start to put things in a box, set a date on it from six months from now. And if you haven't touched it in six months, then that probably means it's okay to be erased from your life and into the hands of someone else who could possibly use it. All right. Which leads me to the next one, which is essentially declutter regularly and consistently because the more that you do this, the easier it becomes. And that one hour of time consistently is saving you time over and over and over. So you're just being able to think better, think clearer, and work in a space that serves you. Use technology to your advantage. Yeah. You can stay organized with calendar apps. If you're not a paper calendar person, you can use task management apps. So I talked earlier about using a calendar, use technology to your favor. If you're someone who doesn't want to buy a paper planner, I totally get it. Use your Google calendar, set reminders, create labels for yourself, color code everything by child, by event, by office hours versus personal time and vacation, you name it. You can create a lot of tabs and labels for different events and items in your life. And this helps you not just throughout the holidays, but throughout the entire year. And the last thing I would say is establish daily routines. And, and, and I'm going to add to that kind of creating those traditions. Because I think one way to also stay focused around the holidays is, yes, establishing those routines, but I feel like traditions and holiday traditions are a part of that as well. Because when your kids look forward to doing those things or you look forward to creating those moments for yourself or your family, it gives you something to look forward to and it keeps you consistent. You're creating this vision for the life that you want your children to have. And that doesn't have to include a significant amount of financial investment. It can be that every Friday night you watch a holiday Christmas movie. So we like to go through and kind of start our list and we start watching movies with the kids for the holidays. And we'll start typically do like a Friday, Saturday, and we'll do a family movie. And then maybe my husband and I will watch one that we really like to watch. So just starting some of those little traditions that your kids will really enjoy. If you celebrate St. Nick Day on December 6th, you know, leaving them just a little something to get them excited about the holidays and, and, and just to cherish the spirit of this time of year is a really great way. If you like to bake sugar cookies or cookies for Santa to put them out the night before. Maybe that's something that you start or you create this tradition of doing that every year. If you celebrate Hanukkah, what traditions are you then building for your family and for your children to remind them of what a special time this, this is? When I think back to my childhood and I find that most of us will feel the same way, I can rarely, I can remember very few physical presents that I was given, but I can remember the feeling of waking up on Christmas morning, spending time with my family, eating breakfast, opening presents. Can't really remember what I opened, but I just remember the love, the warmth, the fun, then watching movies, fixing hot chocolate you know, getting to kind of eat a lot of sweet treats and just creating those moments and those memories with my family. That's what I seek to do as a mom now. And when I think about creating that vision for my life outside of the holidays as well, that's what I'm looking to do. I want to create those small moments. I want to create those memories that I will remember forever. And I have very rarely found that a physical item does any of that for me. It's typically the people that I'm around, the moments that I've created within the spaces that I have been, sharing it with the people that I love the most. So as we embark upon this holiday season and we work to get organized and we work to establish some of those routine, routines, to stay consistent in what we're working towards, establish those morning routines, stay consistent with those evening routines, especially if you have kids, because this is a, a crazy, frenetic, like super cool time of year for them, especially if you have children under the age of eight. I just love this time of year for them. And as a parent, it's one of the coolest experiences to watch your child just absolutely soak up the spirit of what the holidays is all about. If you have elves, make sure that they do what they're supposed to do and that they move every night. You don't want to upset children. So establish routines like that. You know, get 
get your older children to help out, whether that is by, you know, volunteering or writing notes to people, wishing them, you know, a wonderful holiday season, putting a note on a stranger's windshield, just wishing them a happy holidays. Anything that will bring joy and a smile to someone's face during this season, but establishing some of those routines and establishing some of those traditions are just great ways to make this holiday season special and everyone after it. So hopefully today I've shared with you some ways in which I get organized for the holidays. You know, is there is there a, a, a tried and true process that I follow throughout the holidays? Yeah, sort of, but at the same time, this is also a time when I sit back and relax and just enjoy letting my kids be kids, letting them write their lists to Santa, to go visit Santa, and to really soak up the joy that this season brings. And I try to remind myself every year why it is we're celebrating the holiday in the first place and the true meaning of that. So I feel like if we can stay grounded in what we are celebrating in the first place, it helps us refocus. And that in and of itself helps us get our mind right and get our mind organized for the holidays ahead. So take some time, moms and dads. And even if you're not, if you're, if you are not a mom or a dad, if you're a caregiver, just anyone who is going through this holiday season, take some time to yourself to write out the things that you want for this holiday season. Take a moment to chart out your, your December. What does that look like to you? What do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? How do you want to feel? How do you want to approach this holiday season? And then think about that every day. As you are preparing for your day, think about a few things that you want to constantly be working towards, right? It's establishing that daily routine. That's, that's a piece of it. So do you want peace in your life this holiday season? Do you want to spread joy in, in, to others so that you can receive joy in your life this holiday season? Do you want to give? And how do you want to give? What does this season mean to you? If you've experienced loss, pain, trauma, tragedy during this time of year, explore that, allow yourself to lean into those emotions. This can be a very stressful and hectic time of year for people. It's not all a bed of roses for, for some people to celebrate the holidays, but lean into those feelings and those emotions. If there's anything that therapy taught me, it's leaning through things and pushing through things instead of going around them is the best way for us to deal with how we are feeling and to acknowledge that, to sit in it, to sit in those moments of suck or just ick and not feeling like we want to celebrate. That's okay too. But then figuring out a path out of that, how are, then, how are you then going to come through that so that you can make this a really special time of year for yourself and for, the, for others around you? Because you deserve that. We all deserve that. We deserve to be happy every day of our lives, but we have to seek that happiness and we have to create it for ourselves. So. With that, I hope that I have given you some tools, tricks, tips in order to stay organized for the holidays. And I wish you all a, an incredibly merry and wonderful holiday season. And I am excited to have a few more guests this month that I have had some amazing conversations with, and I'm looking forward to our five minute check-in at the end of this year as we head into 2024. This has been a phenomenal experience for me, and I'm excited to continue it into next year with some amazing guests and just diving deeper into this vision that we are all creating for the life that we want to live, living it with authenticity, with purpose, with meaning, living it joyfully, living it fully, living it creatively, and leaning into our purpose and passion of why we are doing what it is that we do. So happy holidays to all of you and spend some time this weekend or this week getting organized because you will be so glad that you did.